We've fixed our vehicle, so now it flies down the screen once again, extremely fast. At least our code is a bit more readable, but now we need to slow that vehicle down so it doesn't just fly off into the distance. So in our player controller script, we're actually going to use a little bit of math in this method to be able to slow our vehicle down. So first what we're gonna do is we're going to want to change the way that we move our vehicle. So currently the way this works is our update method is called every single frame, but depending on how powerful your computer is, you might get 20 frames in one second, you might get 60 frames in one second, and so really your player could move at varying speeds depending on what kind of device they're using. So we actually want to change that from updating every frame to updating over time every second. So the way that we do that first is by multiplying. And for a computer, you should use the star symbol. So if you press shift on your eight key, it'll create that star symbol. Because actually if you press X and use the X key, it doesn't, it considers that an actual letter that it needs to know to use for a word. So we use the star symbol to tell us that we're multiplying something. And then what we'll actually do is we have a class already made to keep track of time. So we don't have to write a class ourselves. So that is called time with a capital T and you can even see it highlights it in green. That way we know that this was a pre-made class. So now we're using time to keep track of our time and we actually use delta time to get the change in time between all of our different frames. So now using this bit of code, we can actually know when one second has actually elapsed versus 20 frames happening, 60 frames happening, who knows, we can't control that. We can control how much time is actually passing. So if we go test this, we press play and our vehicle is still flying down the road and that's not what I want it to happen. Uh, I, for, I forgot to save again, okay. So back in the player controller, just make sure you save, control or command S, that way it always updates the script in Unity. So now, when I press play, we should see our vehicle moving, albeit very slowly, but because of that little bit of code we added, we're actually now moving one meter a second. You can see, if you want to time it, it would probably be just about one unit every single second. So, cool, now we have our vehicle moving by time. Granted, it's moving very slow, but we can fix that pretty easily. So what we're gonna do in our player controller, we're just going to multiply by a random number using that star symbol. So we'll multiply by say 20, so it should move about 20 meters every second now. So now if I test and I press play and I forgot to save again, always remember to save. Now when we press play, there you go. Now it's moving nowhere near as fast as before, but definitely not as slow either, which is great. As a fun little tidbit, the way that this formula actually works, this little equation that we have. So in fact, vector three dot forward is storing a zero, a zero, and a one. And so when you're actually multiplying it by the time and by 20, you're actually multiplying each of the different values. So first you multiply your zero by time and by 20, which will always be zero. Then you multiply your y, which is zero, by time and 20, which is still zero. And then you multiply the z by time and by 20, which gets you 20 meters a second. So just a fun way to kind of see how the math works and would definitely save a lot more time than just typing zero times time dot delta time times 20 comma zero times time dot delta time times 20 times one times time dot delta time times 20. So a really helpful way that especially this shorthand makes our lives even easier than before. So what you're gonna do is in your update method, you're going to change your transform.translate to just include a star symbol for multiply. And you're going to multiply your vector three dot forward by time dot delta time. And then you're gonna multiply all of that by 20 
So now it should move just about 20 meters a second so that when you test your game, you press play. If you select the vehicle while it's moving, you can see the Z value changing. And if you used a stopwatch, I'm sure you could see that it probably moves just about 20 times every second. So now it's your turn.